time once again for a powerful mix of fitness, focus, and philosophy. Philosophy? Philosophy. That's right. Kick back and get ready for your host. Wisdom keeps her fit mentally. Squats keep her fit and fine physically. Yes, I said fine. Tune in and prepare to challenge your body and your mind with Professor Kristen Hester. You'll think better, you'll live smartly, and all thanks to Kristen teaching us right now how to squat wisely. And now here's Professor Kristen Hester. I am recording this on a beautiful Valentine's Day for some people who celebrate that. But in the spirit of the holiday, I wanted to do an episode that focused on loneliness and living single. I have a story that I want to attach to this to help me to unfold why I wanted to speak on this and also why I titled it Loneliness and Living Single. A few years ago, I was getting my hair done. It was a young lady there. We were very close in age. I don't even know. You know how it is. Well, if you're a male, you may not know. But I I used to work in a barbershop when I was young. So you guys gossip just as much as the women do. But anyway, it was one of those things. I guess it was a girl talk situation going on. And the stylist was the one leading this conversation. And she was a single woman and I am single. And she raised the question to me like, She was really venting about, you know, being single and I guess, you know, feeling unhappy because she was feeling so lonely and so alone. And she asked me as someone else who's single, she wanted, I guess, my input or my opinion or some feedback from me on how do I handle feelings of loneliness? That was her direct question to me. And when she asked me that, my mind went back to times where I've been in relationships with people, but I felt alone. Being connected to someone did not diminish or take away the reality that I still felt alone sometimes. And I didn't really get into trying to give her a direct answer because I could tell that she was venting and I could tell that for her, it was something that was very heavy for her. And I didn't share her same feelings. You know, I I really, I don't have a problem with being single. I probably enjoy um, being single probably more than I should. And even when I had boyfriends and I was always dating and stuff, I've always been an introvert type of personality. I've always been somebody where, you know, people always say, why is she so quiet? You know, or, you know, why, why doesn't she engage? Or I've always had that personality when in social settings. And a lot of times it has nothing to do with the people who are around me. It's just social settings. Sometimes I deal with migraines and, you know, a whole lot of conversation and activity. It's just too much for my introverted soul. It's just too much. That's just a natural aspect of my personality. I mean, so much to the point where even when I was dating guys in the past, they would be offended because, oh, you know, my family says, you know, you don't ever want to come around or, you know, or, you know, or when they try to talk to you, you don't say much. And, and it's not that I don't, you know, was disliking people. It's just my personality. I just have more of a, a chill, relaxed type of personality when I'm in social settings. And as she's talking to me, you know, about how she feels. See, she is very bubbly. She's very outgoing type of person. And I can understand, you know, why that's something that could be a concern for her. I also was concerned though, because from what I gathered, not just from her, but a lot of people, men and women, because I have students, you know, I'm a college teacher and Boy, I tell you, some of the emails that I get from students about their personal lives, it is definitely TMI. I know they feel they need to tell me everything, but they really don't need to tell me everything. But uh, people tell me just way more than I need to hear. And the thing I have found out about most people, whether it's male or female, when it comes to relationships and when it comes to struggling with being single, many of them feel that being connected to someone will be a remedy 
for a lot of the things that they feel they are lacking in. And I think that that's dangerous. You know, it's like, I like, um, you know, it's a guy named Mark Cuban. A lot of you all may know Mark Cuban. I used to work in television. So I learned a whole lot more about Mark Cuban when I was dealing with um, NBA TV. That uh, was a part of my background. And, you know, a lot of people think Mark Cuban is a jerk or whatever. And he's also on that Shark Tank show. But, you know, even if people think he's a jerk, I like something that Mark Cuban said one time on Shark Tank. And it was a guy on there who um, had, you know, his product and he was trying to get some support from the um, people who are on the show. And I don't even know how they got into relationships or whatever. But Mark Cuban was trying to help this guy. And the guy was worried about, I guess, relationships and his home life and something like that. And Mark said to the guy, he said, well, I didn't even want to think about marrying someone until I became basically a successful businessman is what he said. And he said, the reason why I didn't even want to think about it is because I knew that my focus and my dedication was really geared more towards success business-wise than success love relationship-wise. And he was someone who got married older. I believe he was in his 40s when he got married. And that was his choice because it was more important for him to be whole and satisfied within himself before he tried to create a life with someone else. And I thought it was very powerful, the advice that he gave, because so often we think about joining forces with people. Like I know women now and I get it. You know, I have a mortgage and I'm paying bills and all of this stuff. I I get why some people get married to try to get help (laughs) to pay bills. But that is what it has become a lot of times. It's not about, you know, coming together for the sake of love. It's just coming together for business. It's coming together to save me some money. It's coming together. So, you know, life can be a little bit easier financially. And one of the phrases that I love is a quote, and many of you have heard it, and it's basically probably a slang kind of quote, but it's the truth. And it says, you know, don't go around counting someone else's money. I need to, that's the quote for today. Do not go around counting someone else's money. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're in a loving relationship with someone and you're, you know, growing together and and you're trying to, you know, build something together, you know, naturally, I don't even think Mark Cuban would be opposed to that. I think what he was saying is make sure that you feel satisfied with your life and the goals that you have for yourself versus thinking, okay, well, if I get connected with someone, then I can fulfill these goals that I desire for myself. No, make sure you have your own goals for yourself. You accomplish those goals. So when you get with someone, you're not looking for someone to make up slack in an area that really only you can fulfill. And just to get back to the whole point of, you know, not going around and counting someone else's money. I used to work in the airline industry and something that we used to tell people that called in, I was in a call center. We had to say on every call, you know, flights and fares are subject to change. Flights and fares are subject to change. Well, that's not only true in the airline industry. That's true in relationships. I mean, there are people who have been married 20, 30, 40 years, and all of a sudden they get like Patti LaBelle and have a whole new attitude, (laughs) you know, and and, and they want to take the house and their money too and everything else they can take. So, Don't go around counting someone else's money. Do not get connected with people to make up areas of slack that only you can fulfill. And don't create in your head that, oh, if I just had someone, I wouldn't feel lonely. Oh, if I was just in a relationship, I would be happier. Well, the truth is you can be in a loving relationship and still feel lonely. You can be in one of the happiest and most supportive, loving relationships, and you can still feel alone. You can still feel like you are by yourself. To bring this topic home, I want to give a story that uh, relates to 
a guy that I met. This was just a random guy. I'll never forget this. This was many years ago. I was in College Park, Georgia. I was at this Jamaican restaurant uh, called Tropical. <laughs> it's real popular for people who live out here. But uh, I was at the Tropical Jamaican restaurant. And it was actually during the time when a theater was still open on Old National. And only people who live on my side of town will even know what I'm talking about right now. But more so than the businesses, I want to talk about an encounter that I had with a guy who was a complete stranger to me. I was sitting there. I had ordered some food. And the guy just started... um, talking to me. So he kind of was flirting, but then, you know, it really wasn't like that. It was like he was just trying to kill time and really wanted to talk. I don't know. I remember asking him, I was like, you know, so, so what's your story? (laughs) And that was one of the things that I used to ask people when guys would flirt with me, especially when I was younger, well, what's your story? And little did I know that he was going to really like lay something kind of heavy on me. I was like, whoa, you know, again, these TMI moments you encounter with people. And he said to me, he said, you know, I just got married. And I was like, oh, okay, congratulations. You know, I'm all, I'm more excited, you know, than he is. And he was like, uh, I guess. And I asked him, I said, well, you know, what's, what's behind that? Why are you not excited? You told me you just got married. He said, well, everything was great. He said, you know, she's a great girl. And, you know, we had so much fun when we were dating. We were really in love. We just had so much fun. We enjoyed each other's company. And he said, everything was great. Everything, day by day, the time they they had been together, um, I think they were even dating maybe a couple years or so. Everything was great. Their their little courtship was wonderful. And it was finally now time for them to get married. And he said, as soon as we got married, though, he said, and, and when I say as soon, he said, I mean, as soon. She literally, he said, overnight became a dramatically different person. Now, let me be clear. This guy was a stranger to me. And I know that there are three sides, as they say to every story, his side, her side, and the truth. So again, all I'm all I can convey is what he shared with me. And so I asked him, you know, I'm like, well, you know, tell me more about that. <laughs> you know, how how did she change overnight? He was like, Well, as soon as we got together, it was like the next day they he wanted to do something like go out somewhere to celebrate or whatever. And I, maybe it was at their honeymoon or something like that. And all of a sudden, she just didn't want to do anything. She didn't. And she became like she went from being she went from being, he said, a, a social butterfly to a hermit. It was like literally overnight. She just became a dramatically different person. And so if he wanted to go out and have fun, you know, he was like initially it was all about him wanting to do that with her. He was like, that's what we did all while we dated. So he didn't understand, you know, what changed once we got married and she would get angry you know, because he wanted to do things, but then she would get angry again if he just said, well, forget it. I'm going to go out by myself then. And so anyway, he was venting that frustration to me. And here he was, someone who was a newlywed. I'm sure family and friends who probably attended the wedding who would run into him after that, I am sure they were like, I bet you're still on honeymoon, ain't you? <laughs> you know, and little did they know, because I'm a stranger, and that's probably why he was so unapologetically honest with me about how he felt. But he was ready for a, a divorce. He was ready to all of the history, all of the good times. He was ready to sever it all. He even told me that he was so depressed that he was thinking, you know, things he knew was not healthy and knew wasn't mentally healthy for him. And I was just like, man, you know, that's deep. And see, we become imprisoned. You know, it's just like people do so much to get prepared for a wedding. You're caught up on colors and you, you, the venue and who's going to sing what and who are going to be the flower girls. And you get caught up on all of this foolishness that won't apply at all when it comes to those real hard times, when you got to really live through some stuff. 
when you got to really cry through some things, when you have that first argument, when you really... 